Justin Haley announces he will move to Rick Ware Racing for a multi-year deal starting in 2024. Spot on, spot off of Brett. Well, I will have to say it takes a lot to surprise me around here. And when I opened <laughs> up social media that morning and I glanced through it, and the next thing you know, I start getting screenshots from folks like my good friend, Freddie Kraft. And my first instinct the instinct that I had uh, was, what the f***? Like, I legitimately said to myself, what the f***? Like, this can't be real, right? Um, so then I sat there for a minute, and, and obviously Justin is a friend of mine. Justin is somebody I really enjoy talking to. He's somebody I got to know as a result of spotting for him full time last year in the in the Cup Series. And so, man, I just sat there for a minute, and I'm thinking back to conversations that he and I had over the summertime. Um, hadn't really spoke to him a lot in person since North Wilkesboro because I haven't been at the track. But I'm sitting there, man, and I'm just trying to make sense of all of it. And so I get off my Justin, you know, kind of emotional ride that I'm on, and I go, okay, what is Rick Ware thinking? And my response is, this is the smartest thing they've ever done in their company's existence. They have gone from having and nothing against these guys, Josh Balicki and Cody Ware driving their cars, to Ryan Newman and Cole Custer. Big upgrades. And then I look at and listen, we sat here on this show, or I did, I sat here on the show, and I said, and I pounded the table going, if you're the slowest car in the garage week in and week out, you should lose your charter. And right now, the last three cars every single week are the 15, 51, and 78. And I said, if you're not doing anything to make that better, you don't deserve to own a charter. Well, guess who's doing something about it? Rick Ware. They've gone out. They hired Robbie Benton. They hired Tommy Baldwin. They're hiring Justin Haley. Wow. Talk about a rebrand. They don't make the PR blunders they were making. Remember that whole Jennifer Joe Cobb announcement thing where they announced she's running cup and NASCAR said, oh, not so fast. That's a PR blunder. They're not doing that anymore. So Rick Ware Racing appears on the, on the front of the page here to really be making a major attempt to make their program better, make their cars faster. How do you do that? Well, you go out and you hire a guy with Justin Haley's experience, obviously a good road racer, a great drafter, a good little short track racer, and I, and I think it's a big hire for them. So then I go back and I'm thinking, Justin, what the f*** are you thinking? So it all, all, the good news is I had an opportunity to speak to him, and he told me what the f*** he was thinking. And what the f*** he's thinking is, and I've been a part of these scenarios too, um, he's been sold – on a, a bill of goods that tells him that Rick Ware Racing is going to do everything that they can to make their cars better and make their cars faster. And I was a part of situations like this that, that, that came true, right? And I was a part of situations like this where it didn't come true. Harry Scott, oh my God, worst year of my life was spotting for Harry Scott Motorsports. Not because of the people, because all the promises that were made about how they were gonna update their equipment when Justin Algar left, None of those promises were fulfilled. So when I'm talking to Justin, and he keeps reiterating to me that, and he said this publicly, otherwise I wouldn't, wouldn't speak to it, Steve Newmark, Brad Keselowski, and Rick Ware, and Robbie Benton um, had meetings with Justin, and, and he believes a lot in the alliance that is going to happen with Keselowski and, and, and Roush Fenway, right? So the question now becomes, we know the future. We know the future for Justin Haley. I now understand why my WTF moment is over. We know that this is a win for Rick Ware Racing. The question now becomes, and when we're sitting here um, six races into next year, is Brad Keselowski, Steve Newmark, or Roush Fenway really going to do all the things they said they're going to do to help Rick Ware Racing? Is Rick Ware Racing really going to do all the things that it takes to get that help? Because, and I know I'm rambling, it takes money. It takes people. And if I am Rick Ware Racing, I know that I can get better people to come and work on my race cars if I have Ryan Newman driving them and Justin Haley driving them versus Cody Ware. Yeah, I mean, I'm 100% I'm spot <clears throat> off. And I'm spot off for all the idiots on Twitter and social media talking about Justin downgrading, essentially. Because, you, for one, you don't know what – his other options are, you know, I understand maybe that the 51 is a step back from the 31, 
But if, in my mind, Justin already knows he's not going to be back into 31 at this point when he makes this deal. You know, I know that Chris had come out and said, like, you know, we want Justin back. I'm sure they wanted Justin back on their terms. Maybe those terms aren't great for Justin. You know, so, you know, when you see people, they said they want him back. Well, yes, they might have wanted him back, but they might not have offered him the best deal possible. And Justin, you know, Chris came out the other day and said it's a business decision. Justin's in the same business. He's got to make a business decision for himself. You know, well, like you said, we both talked to Justin. You know, he is pretty big on the the, the Roush, you know, side of this thing, Roush, the RFK side. Um, and and listen, right now, if you look, somebody I keep getting tagged in it. Somebody does a um, a, a list of the teams, ranking the teams as their, you know, the average of their team's total points. You know, that they had to, whatever teams they got in the underhouse and and under their roof, and they you know add them all together, average them. And Roush, the RFK is like third or fourth in that list. They're the hot. only. They are one of the only teams with all their cars in the playoffs right now. You know, um, th- if you look, I've seen people say, well, you know, what's a what's a alliance with them going to do? Because you know, it's you know, it's just another Ford team that's not running great. Well, who would you rather be aligned with right now, Roush Fenway or or Stuart Haas Racing? You know what I mean? The, the six and the seventeen have shown a lot more speed lately than any of the Stuart Haas cars, except for maybe the four. Um, so, like, you're, it's everything to your point. You know, Justin's making a decision for himself. He is banking on the fact that they're going to give him everything they promised, you know. And I just think that there's when it, when it, at the end of the day, if the 31 is off the table for you, what's your other options? You know, we've talked about the 10. You know, you keep hearing the same names: Michael McDowell, Zane Smith over there. You know, if one of those, I don't go- think either one of them is going to the 10. All right, that's fine. Um, but you know, if you then you what else is left? If one of them leaves, maybe that opens up a seat at at you know front row. If front row, you know, are they going to go away from Todd Gilliland to get Justin Haley? I don't know. You know, the, and it's just so that the options left on the table are looking at like the 51 and the 77 maybe. And, you know, if, if Roush Fenway is involved, Roush Fenway Keselowski is involved with the 51 and the 77 is just kind of still doing what they're doing. That looks way more attractive. And then multi-year offer on top of that, this guy's racing for a living. <clears throat> you know, there's just a lot of things that Justin's making a business decision for himself. And like you said, he's basing it off of what he's being sold on from these two companies. And, and hopefully it works out for him. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm really spot on. I think this is a, a big step for them. I've seen, you know, I've preached it for a while. Now. I've seen the small improvements that they've been making over the over the months and, um you know their their cars are more competitive now than I feel like they've ever, than they ever been. Um, you know, and you, you don't you you like if you get back there in in the in the soup, you they're there racing. You know, it's not like oh we're we're lap. You know, mo- I mean there are weekends where they have their moments or whatever. But Robbie and and Tommy and them guys have done a phenomenal job of keep upgrading that place. What can what's the next step? What's the next step? And now bringing in the drivers that they are like Justin's a promising young driver. He's got a, uh, the ceiling's pretty high for him. Y- you bring him in there. And if you look at the, and I know they, they do talk about it on TV quite a bit, but from when I walked into that shop from when Brad took it over to now night and day difference. I mean, it's like, it's a young growing, looks like a small Penske shop. Now Brad's, transformed that whole place and if you if you bet against brad you're an idiot so brad's very successful businessman he knows what he's doing and you know i and him even being a part of it i don't know why um <clears throat> you know it, it, brad's one of the guys that if he tells you hey you know you should do this he's you should probably do it he's really smart like that almost too smart for his own good sometimes but he's just one of them guys man and because he was groomed from that type of like who else is it? I mean, where'd he come from? The guy that hired him for, you know, to race in the cup series. If Roger Penske told you to go to the store and buy number two pencils. You're probably leaving here and going to buy number two pencils. As many as I can find. Exactly. So, and Brad's very similar to that. So I think, you know, I think it's a big move for Justin and it's a huge move for Rick Ware and them guys. It, it puts them to me, this puts them on the map even more. You know, yeah. and to get a guy like Justin, and, too, and is good. It's only going to make them better. We talk about on here the difference in drivers and, and getting good drivers in your equipment. You know, I'm not trying to knock anybody, but Cody Ware and Josh Balicki are not going to make your program better. When you get Ryan Newman in there who knows what it's like to drive a good race car, mm-hmm. he can come back and tell you 
all the stuff that's wrong with your racing, you know, everything, for, not even the car, just team, whatever, all aspects of it. He can tell you what's wrong with it. Justin Haley has now been a part of college racing for multiple years. He knows that atmosphere. He can bring that over there. You know, you start getting guys, and listen, they are, they're, they're, I, I, <laughs> Justin, the only thing I was going to give Justin about was like, you know, he said, like, they've been impressive this year. But listen, they have not been impressive. They have, they have been more competitive. I will give them that. They've maybe jumped from a, a 35th place car every week to a 30th place car in running order. And there's weeks. Cole Custer was running around the top 20 at Loudon. So there's weeks they can hit on it. But, but you know but how hard improving. it is to go? The, the big, yeah, the biggest like, thing hard. is they are improving. It used to be we would lap these two cars in. Oh. For, they'd be the first two we'd get to, and we'd lap them five, six times a race, you know, at least. Um, so, like, you see the improvement. The the improvement maybe in the finishes isn't there yet because it's a big jump to go. If you if you try to just look at any team in the sport and try to jump them five positions and see who they're going to try to jump over. Mm-hmm. You know, you look right now, the it's guys hard. are running if, – if they're a 30th place team, the guys running 25th are the Stuart Haas cars. You, you, are you expecting Rick Ware to jump over Ryan Priest and Chase Briscoe? You know, like, that's the jump you're looking at making. So they're getting more competitive. They're doing the right things. And to, to your point, like the if they put better drivers in their car, it's only going to elevate their program because these guys are going to be able to come in and tell them all the stuff that is wrong. That's here, what I'm here, saying here's about your Brad. Inspiration. Here's your inspiration, and it's two words, Corey LaJoy. That, that seven Spire team, oh, they were bad. And, and now, yeah. man, the guy qualifies top ten every now and then. He runs top ten some. I mean, to your point, Freddie – Corey LaJoy outruns a lot of damn teams with bigger names and bigger bigger freaking budgets, right? I've always said faster race cars make you a faster race car driver. But For if sure. but if in this situation, how do you find out if you're Rick Ware racing, if you're actually any good, and where you need to get better? And this is freaking screaming at the church, but screaming to the choir. But you hired Cole Custer, who has won in a lot of series. You hired all three series, to speak in fact. Ryan Newman. Daytona 500 champion, freaking Rocket Ryan, right? I mean, and now you've gone out and hired Justin Haley, who has three truck wins, four Xfinity wins, one cup win, is a very competitive guy. Now you can't blame the driver anymore. Now you can't say, well, you know, Cody ain't that good or Josh ain't that good. Well, now you got good guys. Go, go, go make your program better. It'll be interesting to see, and it won't take us long. We'll know a few months in the next year how, how real is this alliance Right, because to your point, there were there were a lot of times yesterday where both Busher and Brad were running top ten, top eleven. Um, how real is this alliance? Because we're going to know right off the bat. And if they're a second and a half off at, at qualifying when we get to a Pocono next year or we get to a Michigan, it means the alliance was all BS and and, and Justin was sold a bad bill of goods. So I hope it's real. I hope it works out for all these parties. Because again, I like Justin a lot. I like what Rick Ware is doing, and it's going to be important to the growth of the sport to have these bottom charters actually not be so irrelevant. And so so slow. Yeah. And then and, and obviously the other side of this opens up the opens up the 31 car. You know, and as obviously it, it you see on uh, you know social media this week Austin Hills kind of a rumored guy to be over there. What somebody's coming from the Xfinity series to take this ride I feel like. Um and, that, and that's going to open up another chain. I've heard a lot of stuff in the Xfinity series this week about some driver movement. Um you know, if Austin Hill leaves, that's going to leave the 21 open. I've heard potentially um somebody I don't know if I want to go into <laughs> details. Uh, somebody going back to JGR that used to be there um, in the Xfinity side. So JRM shuffling. There's a JRM, lot of, there's maybe, a lot of stuff. maybe some driver change. Obviously, the eight cars already open over there. Maybe another opening coming over there. Maybe guys going from JR. There's there's a lot of shuffling going on <clears throat> in that Xfinity series that, that should shake things up pretty big for next so, year. Somebody made one comment to me this week that I thought was kind of funny because we saw a lot of tweets from people saying this is a career-ending move for Justin Haley. Um, let me tell you what a career-ending move is, that Justin sits on his hands and hopes that something better comes along and finds out in October or November that he's not going to be back in the 31 and he doesn't have a job. That's yeah. a career ending. Somebody move. text me and Brett that you know that's a career ending move. I said, well, not for the next couple of years because he's got a deal. <laughs> you know, like yep. he, he's got a multi year deal. That's more than there. a lot of guys right now. <laughs> yeah, a lot. Just so you yeah. know, but as far as I know, Bubba's only got one year left. You know, like Bubba, I don't know if he's got an option for the third year, but you know what I mean. Like, there's not a lot of guys that have a multi year deal. You know, that are going to be racing the Cup Series. They know for a fact in 24 and 25. I, like what I was going to say is like if you, I'm telling you, if you ter- if you look at last year at this point and compare to like where our cars are right now compared to where they were oh. last year. It, it, we've taken a step. We've taken so many big steps. Like, And it's because I know the guy, 
that drives and his name's on the place that he's there already there Monday morning. He is there four out of the, four days out of the week and because he's 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 doing what he needs to what he needs to do. So, you know, I don't know anybody more committed than Brad and obviously Brad's one of the better drivers. I think Brad's one of the smartest race car drivers out there. So, I mean, it's I don't blame. I think this is a great like you said, we don't know what's going on with Justin what his options are. So if someone comes to him and says, Hey, this is the Alliance where we're going to, we're getting even better and better. Uh, we're going to, we, we got even more bigger plans is what we got. We would like to sign you for two, three years. I don't know what his deal is, but, um, I, I mean, that's, well, how do you not do it for him? You know, him? like, so we don't know if there might not have been in the air, yeah, anything else. That might, not, that might've been his only option. Well, <laughs> and the fact that Brad has been on Justin's side too, like being a driver and having to fight for your ride, having mm-hmm. to fight for what's next. I think, I think Listen, he, and people haven't talked about this. And I don't know how much Brad publicly will speak to this, Casey, to your point. But Brad races with this guy every single week. Right. So he has a major opinion formed about whether or not he thinks Justin Haley is worth forming an alliance with. The last thing that Roush Fenway would want to do is form an alliance with somebody that doesn't provide value to them as a race team. It helps us, too. And value is two things. Obviously, there's the money side of it, which has to happen. We're all in business. The other side of it is, what is Justin going to do to contribute in these meetings and and behind the seat of the wheel? So for Brad to have that confidence to be forming this alliance, that's the other side of this that not a lot of people are talking about. And you, a lot of times you see a team like RFK use their alliance partners to try stuff. Well, you're not going to – I mean, I, I don't want to keep harping on this, but, like, if you have something that you were trying to R&D, you're not going to give it to Cody Ware or you're no. not going to give it to Josh Balicki. You can give it to Justin Haley. You know, you can – you know, th- we got this mm-hmm. car ready. You know, well, we got this trick thing that we want to try out, see if it works. We're going to put it in your car. You're not going to do that with the guys they've had in that car. No. Now this is something you might try. Yes. 